Well, I guess we can start this update off with a look at the rudder pedals. They are mostly installed. You can see I have the pedals back from the powder coater. I also got these little brackets that hold the pedals on powder coated. And you'll notice that I have everything powder coated there. But of course, to get the pedal back through that bracket, I did have to grind off the powder coating on the inside of the hole. I just did that with a Dremel, just took off a little bit of the powder coating, greased it up a little bit and it fit right in. Those brackets are bolted to the bottom of the fuselage. And I have the pedals clecoed in place onto the top of the rudder pedals. You'll notice that they are connected temporarily to the brake pedal actuators there. And I did that just to line up. When I match drilled these holes into the hinges, I wanted to make sure that the pedal was positioned left and right so that this was lined up with the brake actuator there. So you can see that the pedals are just clecoed to the hinge for now. So one of the things I wanted to show you with these pedals and the hinge that you might notice is there's a little tiny gap between the bottom of the pedal and the hinge. And the reason that gap is there is so that the hinge or the pedal can rotate without the pedal touching the hinge. When I built my Zenith Cruiser, when I positioned the pedal onto the hinge, I just put it all the way down like that so it was kind of touching the center of the hinge. And then I match drilled the holes and drilled it in place. And then what happened was when you rotate the pedal like this, the bottom of the pedal is riding on a hinge and it scratches the paint. <laughs> so I, I learned my lesson on the cruiser and now for the Super Duty here, when I put them together and drilled them, I left just a little bit of a gap between the pedal and the hinge. You'll notice I didn't paint the rudder pedals. I didn't paint them in my cruiser either because I think it's about the only part on this airplane that I didn't prime or paint and I just didn't see any reason to prime or paint them. Um, if they're not primed or painted, the paint can't chip off with your feet and it can't rub off. I think it actually in the long run looks better unpainted. One of the things I wanted to point out is this little block in the center here. I just have two bolts going down in there, but there's no nuts on them yet because there's a lot of fuel lines and brake lines and things like that that go down the center of this forward part of the fuselage. And there will be some clamps on here that hold the, I know there's a fuel line that goes through here and probably all the brake lines are gonna come through here. So I'll have some clamps on here holding all those lines securely. So I'm not gonna bolt these on yet because I know that I'll take these off again. I'll need longer bolts and then I'll have a couple clamps under these bolt heads. So that I'll do that later once I run the fuel lines and the brake lines. You can also see that I cut the uh, black anti-skid tape and I put it on the rudder pedals. It's the same tape that I used here where the pilot's heels will rest. And I just kind of put the tape up to the pedal and cut it to the right shape, cut the corners off. You'll notice I have all of the little, uh, the corners on the tape rounded off. I think it just looks better. And when you round off the corners, it's just less, uh, it's, it's not as easy for something to catch it and start to peel it off. And I don't know if it would anyway, because this stuff actually sticks really well, but mostly it looks better. Well, I also have my seats back from the powder coater and you can see I have these brackets riveted on. In the back here, these are flush mounted screws. So when the seat frame is in here, it doesn't rub on any rivets. These are stainless steel rivets. So make sure you don't use the regular A5. These are AS5 rivets. And I have the seat rails installed, but I'm not going to install the seat pans just because I don't know if I need access in here yet. In fact, I think I do need to drill a hole under here in the side of this skin to put a clamp on the fuel line and who knows, I might have like a transponder antenna in there or something, I have no idea. I don't need the seats in there yet, so I will leave them out just to have more room to work in the fuselage. And I do have some of my fuel lines installed, but I am going to make a completely separate video 
on just the fuel lines. These are all from Aircraft Specialty. And I wanna make a separate video because I still get asked questions sometimes about how I ran the fuel lines in my cruiser. So if a couple years from now, anybody has questions about the fuel lines in my Super Duty, I can just point them to a certain episode and it will be all about fuel lines. Now getting the nose gear mounted is going to be a little bit of a job. The first thing we need to do is put these in here. These blocks get mounted. You can see the nose gear goes through here. These get mounted in here. But we'll no what you might be able to notice is they don't fit. Because of the metal that's in here, they don't go all the way back. They only go to here. So I think what I need to do is shave down just a little bit off the edge on both sides. I don't want to shave it off from this, this side because as the way this is now, it fits nicely on the gear. And if I shave off the inside here, it's going to close this hole up and make it too tight. So I need to shave off not much at all, probably like a 32nd of an inch from this side and then that side. That way when these two are put together, they will fit all the way back in there. Now one of the other tricky things to do is this hole right here has to be match drilled into the side of here. So when this is all the way back like that, you have to drill this hole here. But how do you do that? Because you can't get in with a drill bit this way and you can't just guess where that hole is going to be on here. And I was trying to remember how I did this on my cruiser. And I think this is how I did it. I took the other block here and I put the bolt through it like that. And then you can see this little bit of a lip right here, which obviously is the same lip that this is sitting on. I can put this in like this, just like that. And now, because the holes are drilled perfectly in these, if I can drill in through here, through this metal, that hole should line right up with the hole in this piece. So what I should be able to do with these two locked in position like that, I can take a 12 inch drill bit, put it in that hole, slide it all the way in. And at least I can now mark on here, if I hold these tight together, I can mark on the side of the white piece where that hole should be. So I'm just twisting this drill bit to try to get a mark. We'll see how well this worked here. All right, now if you look close on here, you'll see that little black dot. That's the mark that the drill bit made. So now I should be able to drill through here and that would, that hole will match right up with this hole here. Now, one of the other things to consider you see these three holes right here, there's going to be a rivet in there, which means there's a rivet head. So there's two options. You can either put it in and then move it out a little bit to give you room for those uh, rivet heads. Or I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it all the way back so it's sitting flush against the, uh, the white part or the, the firewall, and then maybe just cut a little slot or just kind of grind a little slot out of the back of this block so that it can clear those rivet heads. Because I think I'd rather have this all the way back and really kind of secured against all the metal here to help hold it, rather than just have it kind of floating out a little bit uh, to give it space for those rivet heads. Plus, I've tried it both ways. When I put this in here with the gear, I put a spacer behind here, the same thickness as a rivet head, and it, it really does move this out a, a little bit more than I wanted, you know, about of a difference like that, which probably wouldn't matter at all, but I think that's how I'm going to do it. I'm gonna press it all the way back and then maybe just cut a little groove in here for the rivet heads. All right, I have that hole drilled and I just used my angle drill to get in there to do it. And you can see if I put this piece in here, The bolt goes through very nicely. All right, now the next step is I need to go get a disc sander so I can sand a little bit of this edge off. 
And then I'll put this in here, I'll put this one in, and I'll take my 12 inch drill bit and go all the way through, and that will transfer this hole through the blocks into that hole there, and through this side aluminum piece. Then I'll be able to put a bolt all the way through with the blocks in place. All right, everybody, it's been a good couple days off. It might not look like it, but I actually got a lot done on the Army Super Duty. So I'm going back to work tomorrow, so I'm just gonna tell you where I'm leaving off and uh, what kind of videos are coming up on the Kit Plane Enthusiast channel. Okay, so remember I did talk about these being a little bit too wide to fit in between the metal part here. And I took these over to my neighbor and because he has like a, an 18 inch sanding disc and I just put this up against there and shaved a little bit off of each one. And that did work, it made them a little bit narrower. But the problem is I was having was his disc turned so fast that it's more melting it than sanding it. So now that I got it pretty close, I think I'm going to get a smaller, slower disc sander uh, and finish this off that way. So I'll, I'll finish narrowing these. I'll be able to put these in here and then the nose gear will be ready to install. All right, most of what I've been working on the last couple of days is it's more thought than actually working, but I'm working on finishing up the fuel lines and the brake lines. You can see the fuel line I have here. This goes from the fuel selector down here. There's a clamp, if this will focus, there's a clamp on there, and then it goes to the firewall. Uh, that fuel line goes through here. There's an elbow fitting on that bulkhead, and it comes up and it runs up inside the channel here to this elbow fitting here. And obviously this is where it comes out of the fuselage and into the wing. All right, now for the brakes, you can see I have one of the rudder pedals installed or the brake pedal, because I've painted the hinge. I have to paint the other hinges on there yet. But you can see I have some string run through here. That's going to represent where the rudder cables are at. And that's, if I didn't mention it, that's why my fuel line is off to the left. It clears the brake lines. And you'll see I have my parking brake valve uh, mounted there. It's actually just taped in place right now as I kind of figure things out. You'll notice it's off center because that gives room for the fuel line. And then on this, this uh, green block right here, there will be clamps on the other side opposite the fuel line where two brake lines will come from behind the pedals into the parking brake. They'll exit the parking brake, come out here, and then they'll exit down through the bottom of the fuselage. And I'll do that the same way I do the fuel system. I'll have this mounted like this through the, the bottom. So on the bottom of the airplane, the brake line will attach here. This line will attach from here to the top of here. And then the brakes are going to run on the bottom of the airplane through this center channel to the back of the gear. And then just like all the other Zeniths, the, the brake line will come to the back of the gear and then down to the brakes. One of the really important things I think on the Super Duty is that I'm not using the plastic tubing uh, that's provided with a kit for the brake lines. Because, you know, this airplane has dual brake calipers at the bottom on, on the wheels and just being a big, heavy airplane like the Super Duty, flying in the back country, there's probably going to be times when I'm really gonna be stepping on those brakes. And I really don't like the idea of relying on just plastic tubing for brakes. So I'm having all my brake lines made by Aircraft Specialty, the same company that's making the, the fuel lines, and they will be this, the braided steel line just like this, although it's, it's a lot smaller than the fuel line. You can see by this fitting here, it's, you know, the brake lines are, they're braided steel, but they're much smaller and lighter. Um, but I think that's gonna be a really strong, robust system for the brakes, having, you know, real professional brake lines instead of plastic tubing. So I'll have a lot more info on that as I get them made and installed. And I can't remember if I keep mentioning this or not, if I did, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have separate videos on the brake lines and then separate videos on the fuel lines, uh, just because I think that might keep it a little more organized and help some people out in the future if they're looking to see how I did things. All right, guys, I'm back to work tomorrow, but I'm having a blast building this airplane so far. You know, it's not always coming into the hangar and just riveting parts together. Sometimes it's coming in here for hours and hours 
and just thinking or designing in my head just things like the brake lines and where I want to put the parking brake valve and making the mounts for the parking brake valve, just things like that. To me, that's a lot of fun and that's really what I enjoy about building these airplanes. Um, I really kind of like using my brain and designing things like that. I don't think I'd want to design a whole airplane or scratch build an entire airplane, but things like this is actually a lot of fun for me. So um, hopefully you guys enjoy that kind of stuff too. So when I get back from work, my plan is to get all the brake lines measured and then I'll send those measurements off to aircraft specialty and then Steve can whip me up some good quality brake lines. And then, like I said, I'll make a video about installing those lines in the airplane. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, please do that. There's a lot of good uh, videos coming up. If you haven't already, please hit the like button. It helps the channel. I think it helps YouTube. Um, it counts for engagement and that makes YouTube show my videos to more people, I guess. So it helps grow the channel anyway. We'll see you once I get back from my next trip and get started again on the Super Duty.